discussed about some introduction points about Himalayas. We have discussed about the characteristics of Himalayas and the location of Himalayas. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the origin of Himalayas or the formation of Himalayas. So, let us just begin. Now, this first point is very, very important. The Himalayas are the result of collision between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. Now, for you to understand the meaning of this, there are some topics we have to understand first and then we can start discussing about the origin of Himalayas. Now, this is the Indian plate which is highlighted and this is the Eurasian plate. Now, what are these plates? The entire lithosphere, okay, the entire lithosphere of the earth is broken down into multiple tectonic plates. First, let us try to understand the meaning of lithosphere and then let us come back to this. So, the lithosphere is the layer that includes the crust and the uppermost portion of the mantle. This layer is about 100 km thick and it has the ability to glide over the rest of the upper mantle. Now, we know that the interior of the earth is made up of three layers. First, we have the crust, second mantle and the last core. Now, core can be divided into two parts again. The outer core which is liquid and the inner core which is solid. Okay, So, the interior of the earth like concentric shells we have. The outermost shell is crust. Next, you have mantle which is around 2900 kilometers thick and inside we have the outer core which is liquid and then you have the inner core which is solid. Clear? Now, what is lithosphere? So, lithosphere is marked here. The first 100 kilometers is lithosphere. So, lithosphere consists of the crust and the uppermost portion of the mantle. Now, lithosphere is solid. So, this is one thing which is very, very important. You have to keep this in mind. So, lithosphere is solid. Now, below lithosphere, you have a layer called asthenosphere. Now, asthenosphere is molten. So, due to the high temperature which is found there, the material present there is molten. When you say molten, it is semi-solid. Clear? So, let me just repeat this one more time. The top 100 kilometers is lithosphere and it is solid. Now, below lithosphere, you have a layer called asthenosphere which is molten or semi-solid. Now, it is molten because the temperatures are very high. So, such high temperatures will melt the rocks that are present there. So, asthenosphere is molten and asthenosphere is plastic. So, what do you mean by plastic? The material there is semi-solid and it can be stretched, it is elastic and it can be deformed. It can be converted into any shape or any form. So, that is the reason we are calling it as plastic. Clear? Now, I hope you understood the meaning of lithosphere. It's actually very, very simple. Lithosphere is nothing but the first 100 kilometers of the earth is lithosphere. Starting from the surface, the first 100 kilometers is lithosphere and lithosphere is solid. And beneath the lithosphere, you have a layer of, you know, uh, molten material, which is called asthenosphere. Clear? Now, let us come back to this. The entire lithosphere is broken down into multiple tectonic plates. Okay. So, we know that the lithosphere is solid, right? So, the solid lithosphere is broken down into many tectonic plates. Now, some tectonic plates are major. So, Eurasian plate, African plate, Indo-Australian plate, Pacific plate, South American plate, North American plate, all these are major or large tectonic plates. We also have minor tectonic plates or smaller tectonic plates. So, you have the Philippines plate, Indian plate, Arabian plate, Caribbean plate, Cocos plate, Nazca plate, Scotia plate, all these are minor tectonic plates. And you also have the Antarctic plate here, which is a major tectonic plate. Clear? So, starting from the surface, the first 100 kilometers, which is solid, is called lithosphere. And the solid lithosphere is broken into multiple tectonic plates. Clear? Now, 
what is lithosphere made up of? Lithosphere is made up of the crust, which is the outermost layer of the earth and the uppermost portion of mantle. So these are solid. So that is the reason we are taking them together as a separate layer and we are calling them as lithosphere. Now the lithosphere is broken into multiple plates. We call them as tectonic plates and we have both major tectonic plates and minor tectonic plates. Clear? Now, these tectonic plates are not stationary. These are not static. These tectonic plates are constantly in movement. They are moving around from one place to the other place. Clear? Now, the tectonic plates are moving over asthenosphere, which is molten or semi-solid. Clear? So, you have the tectonic plates and beneath the tectonic plates, you have asthenosphere, which is molten or semi-solid. So, on top of asthenosphere, the tectonic plates are in constant motion. So, why do tectonic plates move? Why tectonic plates can't stay stationary? So, that reason we'll discuss in detail under geomorphology. So, right now here it is not relevant. Clear? So, I hope you understood all these basic concepts which are very, very, very important. Now, this diagram is a cross-sectional, uh, you know, diagram. So, the top 100 kilometers is lithosphere. So, under that we have mantle and mantle is around 2900 kilometer thick and beneath the mantle you have the outer core which is liquid and beneath the outer core you have the inner core which is solid. Now, the thing you have to focus on in this image is oceanic crust and continental crust. Now, lithosphere can be of two types oceanic crust and continental crust. So, this is continental crust where you have the continents, where you have the land mass and this is the oceanic crust where you have the ocean and underneath the ocean you have the oceanic crust. Clear right? Now, let us go back to this image. Now, the entire lithosphere is broken into multiple tectonic plates. This we already know. Some tectonic plates have only continental crust some tectonic plates are purely oceanic crust and some tectonic plates have both continental crust as well as oceanic crust. For example, here, look at Pacific plate. It is purely oceanic crust. Now, just look at Eurasian plate here. It is mostly continental crust. It also has some parts which are oceanic crust, but it is mostly continental crust. Clear? So, the concept is very simple. The lithosphere is of two types, oceanic crust and continental crust. When you say continental crust, it is made up of the continents or the land mass. And when you say oceanic crust, it has ocean. And beneath the ocean, we have the ocean floor, right? That is nothing but the oceanic crust. Clear? So I hope these concepts are simple and clear. So just keep one thing in mind, lithosphere, it is broken down into tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are of two types, major tectonic plates or the larger ones and minor tectonic plates which are smaller ones, okay? And the tectonic plates are in constant motion on top of asthenosphere, which is molten or semi-solid. Now, just look at this image for the sake of clarity. So, the top 100 kilometers lithosphere, beneath that you have plastic asthenosphere. So, this is the oceanic crust. And this is the continental crust. So, just ignore the word sedimentary deposit here. It is not relevant to our current discussion. So, clear right? Now, proceeding further. Now, around 250 to 200 million years ago. We don't know the exact date. We cannot determine the exact date. So, that is the reason we take a date range. So, somewhere between 250 to 200 million years ago. All the land mass on planet Earth was combined together to form one single continent, one super mega continent. It was called Pangaea. Now, the meaning of Pangaea means all Earth, or sorry, all of the land mass on Earth. Now, this Pangaea was surrounded by a mega ocean. It was called Panthalassa. So, the word Panthalassa means all of the water. Clear? So, Pangaea means all of the land. And the Pangaea was surrounded by a mega ocean called Panthalassa, which means all of the water or all of the ocean. Now, this is how Pangaea looked like. 
and just keep in mind the name of Tethisi here. Okay, so just keep in mind the word Tethisi and the location of Tethisi because that is very important to us when we discuss about the formation of Himalayas. Clear? So this is how the earth existed or I can say the landmass on the earth existed somewhere between 250 to 200 million years ago. Now we know that the tectonic plates are in motion. The tectonic plates are not stationary, they are in motion. So eventually Pangaea broke up into two parts. The northern part is called Laurasia and the southern part is called Gondwana. Clear? So again, that is C is here. Now, these land masses further broke up into individual parts because the tectonic plates are in constant motion. Okay, so this is how they look like eventually. Now, what happened here? The Indian plate, it started drifting in this direction and it collided with the Eurasian plate. Okay, so somewhere between 50 to 60 million years ago. So we don't know the exact age. So this is the date range, rough estimation. So somewhere between 50 to 60 million years ago, the Indian plate drifted and collided with the Eurasian plate due to the movement of tectonic plates. Clear? Now, so I hope you understood this video. I hope you understood all the concepts we discussed in this video. These are like the foundation concepts, basic concepts. If you don't have clarity in this, the next video will not be clear to you. Okay. So in this video, we have discussed about the meaning of lithosphere, the meaning of tectonic plates and how Pangaea broke up into the multiple individual land masses we have today. Clear? So in the next video, we are going to discuss about the origin of Himalayas or how Himalayas actually formed. So Himalayas formed due to the collision between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate. So that is what we are going to discuss in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best.